Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, well, we like to start at 12 and finish right at, at one. So I wanna welcome our audience. We have Thomas and Sally are superstars. So we have a lot of people coming in and waiting to, uh, you know, when you have celebrities on the show, it's always nice to see, uh, see people, people coming in. So Sally Glick, who's the principal and chief growth strategist for Sobel Co. Sally, welcome. Thank you. And Thomas Clark, the founder and director of Cinematrocity, who was uh, so incredibly helpful for our, for our, our annual award. So th welcome, Thomas. Yes, thank you. The, uh, so the first five minutes or so I'm going to go through for, you know, most of our people know Rothman, but uh, a lot don't. So we want to go through this. And then, uh, uh, Thomas, I'm going to tee up Sally's presentation right after mine. And then, um, and then we'll have an interactive. I like to interrupt. And so we'll have an interactive discussion. So why don't we get started? Sounds good. So first, who's the Rothman Institute? So we are, uh, our mission is to support, promote, and research entrepreneurship with a special focus on family and veteran businesses. Our programs are our Family Business Alliance, where we're really growing a, a, an incredible network of family businesses to do everything from coaching to peer-to-peer -peer discussions to uh, educational sessions. We have a lot of student programs. We have an FDU pitch to really encourage entrepreneurship. Our Veterans Lunch and Ventures program has become a national program with people from more than 25 states helping veterans or their immediate family members develop a business plan and grow a business. Uh, we're doing a lot of articles, research, and policy related to entrepreneurship, uh, helping businesses with strategic planning. We're really starting to focus more on urban business support because they really have been, urban businesses have been hurt probably harder than anybody in the pandemic. Um, we're doing some leadership sales and diversity training, and we're starting executive certification programs like SHRM and other programs. So a lot is going on. Working with Sue Slavin and Maura Panuski, you know, we're a three-person three, a three group trying to do some things, but we wouldn't exist without our, found, without our supporters, without our sponsors. TD Bank Charitable Foundation has been a regular and wonderful sponsor, as has Provident Bank, Sun Trust, and Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey, Tony Russo. Um, can't be here, but I think Wendy is going to uh, join us. I'll have to, to, to look for her. Um, so, so again, I just want to thank our sponsors. We're always looking for more sponsors who are interested in supporting what we do. Um, why we're so focused on entrepreneurship, it's more important than ever. You know, we're struggling with unemployment, other things. Entrepreneurship is the key to bridging the political divide that we are constantly suffering under. Um, we're really encouraging public policy to support entrepreneurship. And, and recently, um, uh, thanks to Tim Sullivan and, and Governor Murphy, they have made Entrepreneur Zones part of legislation. And so I'm part of a working group where we're going to establish some Entrepreneur Zones to encourage entrepreneurship in some of the, the most economically challenged communities in the state. Uh, we started something called Family Business Week. We, we encourage people to support family businesses every day of the year. But that week, particularly, we're really trying to get firms to, uh, to do that. You can find out more on familybusinessweek.com. What we're, we're uh, uh, trying to do too is I uh, have a TV show called Family Business World and starting another one called Entrepreneur State of Mind. Um, they actually are going to be on Roku starting next month. Um, and so the whole idea is to really celebrate family businesses and really encourage. So if you have an interest and you want some, some free promotion of your business, let us know and we will, uh, we will interview you. It's 38, 30 minute show. Every third appears on uh, rvntv.tv every Thursday at 10 and 8 p.m. Um, obviously, our Family Business Fridays, which we started in March of last year, have, have really been, been successful, and we just love the positive feedback we've gotten. Our Veterans Launching Ventures program that I mentioned before has really become international. We actually have uh, some folks from, uh, from Germany who had uh, participated in the program. Uh, our YouTube uh, channel, the Rothman Institute of Entrepreneurship, where we will have this recording as well as all our, of our others. So if you've missed our past shows, you can go right there and just just look at us on YouTube and you will see us. And then our, our Family Business of the Year awards that without Thomas, you know, would not have been as successful as it was. Our new Family Business of the Year, Laura Mashtaler from Black Swan Espresso in Newark, a, an amazing new family business. Uh, Dennis Makula and Makula Contracting was our under 10 million in sales business, uh, Family Business of the Year. And uh, Norwalt Design, Mike Sautel and Norwalt were our over 10 million. So. Uh, again, congratulations. Uh, your winners for the whole year. We're going to have another one in October, hopefully in person. So we're looking for nominees for that. 
So uh, also we've written a number of articles and we're happy to share these with people about the pandemic, about entrepreneurship and so on. And so we're really trying to be as, as aggressive as being advocates for what we do. And so, as I said, today we have Sally Glick and, uh, and Thomas Clark, and uh, we're gonna start out, I'm gonna stop sharing this, Sally, and then put up your presentation. And you. I'm happy to uh, advance the slides. Oops, hold on a sec. Okay, can you see that? I can. Okay. Uh, you want to make it the full there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. So the first thing I want to say, of course, is thank you to FDU for um, inviting me today to having the opportunity to share this program with Thomas. It's a great, tr a great treat for me and for Soboco. Uh, most of our business clients are family owned businesses, small middle market entrepreneurs. And so this fits right in. I have a goal for today. And I believe it is your goal as well, those of you who are on, and that is that you want to learn more about how to build your brand on a shoestring budget as a family and business, but with a particular focus right now on all of the challenges we're facing with COVID. So let's, in the, uh, in the time of COVID, the era of COVID, I guess we'd say. So Dale, let's, let's look at the agenda. It helps everyone to kind of figure out where we're heading. Um, Hold on, sir. And um, if anyone has anything other than what I've got planned here, I would urge you to put that in chat or questions and let me know so we have enough time to cover everything that ma matters to you. First thing we'll do just as an overview is define branding so everyone's on the same page. And I'm also going to spend a little bit of time on why a family business should engage in marketing and branding. This is not only important for the uh, Coca-Cola's of the world or the McDonald's of the world or uh, other major organizations. This is important for everyone, every entrepreneur, every business owner. And then how do you build that brand recognizing that you don't have the budget of McDonald's or the, the um, resources of an, a major company, but also are struggling with some of the challenges of COVID, which have limited some of the traditional ways that people do build a brand and companies get well known. And then we'll look at the great things you can accomplish on a limited budget. So we'll talk about why, but we're also going to talk about how. So what is that brand, right? Everyone has a different answer to this question. There's no right or wrong. But the important thing for you to remember is your brand is not just your logo. It's great to have a visual representation of who you are. At the end of the day, your brand, what you stand for, what your reputation is, how you are thought of in the community is what you're aiming to manage and control. It's a very powerful shortcut. Instead of having to say, hi, I'm Sally Glick. I'm with Sobelco. Sobelco is a firm that and go through the entire rendition. People hear that word Sobelco. They see that Sobelco logo and they say, I know your firm. I've been at your webinars or I've seen you at an FDU program. And so the, the, the brand represents you in a meaningful way. And not only is a shortcut so you don't have to go through an entire explanation, but creates that immediate connection to you and who you are and what you stand for and what is different about you and your family business from all the others. So the, that's okay, go ahead. The, the power of the brand is really, um, can't be over, overstated. And it tells your story. Again, most organizations, small family businesses, middle-sized entrepreneurs especially, begin to feel that they're overwhelmed. They don't have a Madison Avenue budget. This isn't about having a major advertising campaign. And of course, then you layer on the COVID issues, which we'll talk about, that do limit your outreach in some ways and expand it in others. But at the end of the day, every single person, as well as every single organization, has a brand. And what I want you to remember is, if you do not take ownership of your brand, if you don't think strategically and in a disciplined way of what you want to be known for, the community will fill in the gaps for you. So if you, you want to be the, the organization that structures, shapes, and tells your story and doesn't leave that to the community to speak on your behalf. So don't think for a moment that you do not have a brand. The minute you walk into the building, put your key in the door, turn it and turn on the lights and walk in, you're starting your day and you're creating your brand. So it's really important that you remember to take ownership of that. And communication is such a powerful tool at all levels within the organization, as well as externally. And your brand lives first and foremost in your own heart. It is not just something that you pay to put on your letterhead, to put on your website, to use on your social media and say, wow, isn't it a beautifully designed icon? It probably is. But your brand is living 
in your heart. Your brand is how you think of yourself and then ultimately how the entire community sees you. It builds awareness, it separates you and distinguishes you, and it helps you strengthen that legacy that you're trying to create that says we are different, we are a special organization, and here's who we are. You know, um, it works very well, and of course, the bigger the, the bigger the brand, the more powerful the name, and I'm saying that it works for every organization of every size, including individuals, and it does. But the examples that you set, when you think of the word Volvo, there's probably no one on this call that doesn't immediately think safety, right? Because that's what they stand for. Your brand is what you stand for. So if you're in uh, Livingston, New Jersey, and someone says Ritz Diner, you get an immediate picture, you know how friendly they are, or you know how great the services, or you know how many bagels they've got that they display. And so you have that brand at every level. It's important that you remember that it reinforces really your own story. And it enables you to bring that positive attention to your organization, small or large. Thank you. So we said we'll talk about why, but we'll also talk about how. And the how piece of that is your branding plan. The word plan there is um, particularly important because I don't want it to just be something that you carry around in your head and that you say to yourself, I will do this occasionally. I will do this when I have time. I will do this when someone pushes me to do this instead of a disciplined, consistent, and structured approach to who you are and what your message is. So again, large or small, just start starting out like Black Swan and Wonderful Footprint It's Making in Newark or an, a, another more established organization. The first thing you need to do as a group is sit down and talk about it from a leadership perspective, whether that's the family members, other senior managers and leaders in your organization. What is unique about you? Don't take that for granted. Don't take that you assume that what is unique that everyone knows. And by the way, what's unique about you is in your opinion. I ran through a branding campaign in South Carolina several years ago uh, for an accounting firm. And when I went to the whiteboard to talk about what's unique about this firm, and I was beginning to write things down, I thought they'd say um, our service or our connection to the community. And several of the people raised their hand and said, it's our spiritual approach. Now in Spartanburg, South Carolina, that was a really important thing to say. It might not work in New Jersey, but it was absolutely the most important thing they could say about themselves in Spartanburg, recognizing the community they served. So think about what's really unique about your organization and what you bring to the table. Because whether it's uh, every business has its own unique characteristics, two side-by-side -side restaurants, two side-by-side -side law firms, two side-by-side -side grocery shops are all going to have their own unique aspects. What do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known for the speed with which you deliver? Do you want to be known for um, extraordinary service? You know, the Ritz-Carlton distinguishes themselves. They say, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. You may go to another lovely place, the Four Seasons, pay even more for your room. And when you ask, where are the elevators? They don't say, let me show you. That let me show you is a unique position that only the Ritz-Carlton take, right? So what position are you taking? Is it going to be cost? What is it that matters most? And then I suggest you take the time, and even if you have done this before, I would do it again, particularly now because of COVID, particularly because so much has changed. Do that SWOT analysis. And SWOT is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You can do that with your own employees. You also can do that with other trusted advisors. Ask some of the people who work with you and within your organization, as well as with you externally, to sort of see what do they identify as your greatest strengths. This is a hard thing to do. I, I worked with an organization once that had a very long list of strengths and a list of only one weakness. Didn't see anything wrong with the entire organization, which I thought was exactly the weakness that should have been on there, right? That they had no faults and, and only strengths. Be honest with yourself, because that's the only way this works. And when you're thinking about the branding plan, as we said, it's on a shoestring. So the things that we're gonna talk about today are not particularly expensive. What they cost is time. Of course, time is our scarcest resource and perhaps our most expensive. So I'm not telling you that there is that it is without effort, but it's what we're trying to do here, what I'm trying to plan for, help you plan for, are the things you can do without that big budget, but yet that will be incredibly effective for you, particularly taking into uh, account the circumstances we're under right now. So go through that SWOT analysis, make a list, 
of the things you do really well, the areas that need improvement. You recognize in your strengths, what opportunities does that create in the marketplace that perhaps you have not been taking advantage of lately? Again, in COVID, restaurants may be picking up more delivery opportunities, right? Or packing packages or delivering gift, pack, gift boxes of dinners to uh, the community, right? Things they did not do before because they didn't need to. So think about what opportunities can come up now. And then of course, the threats that face you. Typically, as well as during this unique year, hopefully not too far into 2021, as Dale said, we hope to be in person in, by October, but not knowing what's coming and the uncertainty of all, what other threats do you think could potentially be facing you that you can address through your strengths? Have a clear understanding as well, not only what's unique about you, but what services and products do you offer? If it takes you five minutes to tell me what you do, you lost me after the first 30 seconds. So know in your heart exactly what it is not only that you want to be known for, but what you do. And then who values that? If I'm trying to sell sweaters in Hawaii, it's probably not going to go over, nor would it go over to sell bathing suits as often in Alaska. So you need to know what does your audience value? And you need to know where you align, given what you're already doing, given who you are, given what's unique about you, particularly through COVID, perhaps your delivery method or the service offerings that you're providing, what audience is there that wants that? And stay focused. It, it sort of feels counterintuitive that the more narrowly you focus, the greater and wider and broader your opportunities are. But that is the reality because the near, more narrowly you focus yourself, the more you know about your audience, the more you know about the others in the same marketplace and the strategic alliances you can connect with, connect to, and the more it tells you about how you can brand your, your organization and the services and products you offer. So staying focused is um, never limiting. It's actually expanding. And so once you know that that... Let me just, because that's a really, really important, because it's so counterintuitive. So I do a lot of work and they just say, well, if I, if I'm everything to everybody, I'm going to get a whole lot more. That's a, it's the total opposite. So that really is, really is important. Right. So and you're just, right, Dale, because you can't be everything to everyone. And what we're going to talk about as we go a little further and take one, each one of these um, tactics at a time, we're going to talk about uh, being the go-to, the expert, the content is king kind of conversation. The more you know about something, the more valuable you are to the audience you're serving. If you're trying to be something for everybody, it's sort of like having um, a heart issue and going to a general practitioner. Um, your GP or your um, internist is great at pointing you in the right direction, but absolutely knows the limits in terms of I don't focus just on cardiac or just on electrophysiology of cardiac or just on the implant of valves. I mean, there's like 10 different areas just on cardiac alone. And certainly your own internist can't focus on any of those except to know you need somebody. So the best thing you can do is have that strategy. It says, what do we do? And what do we do really well? In fact, small or large, small or big, what do we do better than anyone? And I'm going to just use a quick example. I'm glad that Dale put up the names of the winners from October. It reminded me about Laura. Laura has a coffee shop and it's a family business and it's entrepreneurial. But she does some things better than anybody else, big or small, well-known and global, including the atmosphere she's created, the local art that she has on the wall, the way she's handled her customers and brought her family in. So you don't have to be Starbucks to be unique. In fact, Starbucks may not even be unique. But certainly as a small family business with the pride of ownership and your name on the door, you can absolutely target a key audience and know who you're going after. So when you've done that, and you know the demographics of your target audience, then you can create a plan that is what I would call integrated. Integrated meaning that it's not one thing. I've had firms tell me, we tried a newsletter, it doesn't work. And I always want, oh, how long did you try it? What was in it? Who did you send it to? And what does that mean it doesn't work? What were you hoping as a result? Or someone will be quoted in, the, in a fabulous, uh, one of the local newspapers here, NJ Biz or ROINJ, and then they say, what do we get out of that? And I always, what did you want to get out of that? Were you hoping for good exposure, to be reminded of the credibility? Then that's what you got out of it. If you were expecting that someone would call and say, I need to switch auditors, can we speak? Maybe you're not going to get that out of the first quote. So you need to know that you have an integrated plan with many different attributes that all help you 
tell your story. And we'll go through some of these individually. Now, but, so let, let, me give, let me give Thomas a chance to, uh, to come in because he was shaking his oh, head. Oh, for sure. We were going to get to video on website, so go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Thomas, you were shaking your head about the focus and other things. You want to add some, uh, some comments? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, I can kind of talk to that a little bit. Um, you know, I know you mentioned um, the coffee shop uh, specifically for the New Jersey uh, Family Business of the of, of the Year Awards, and I think it's so cool because um, you know, like you said, having you know having that personality, having that story, um, being authentic with people. Um, is an amazing way to uh, build a brand around that. And, you know, you know, she didn't have to show, you know, artwork in, in her coffee shop. That was a choice that she made. Um, and it, it takes it from something as simple as a coffee shop to something, you know, much more unique and uh, complex. And I think people really um, appeal to that uh, value. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, that's a great point. And, you know, what, Thomas, she calls it a coffee culture which a word yeah. I have never heard of. So I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking of all the things she does, but that's how she encapsulates, encapsulates it. Good, good, good. Okay, all right. Thank you. Please do jump in anytime. Um, Dale, we could go to the next slide. Okay, good, 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 good. After you've got your plan ready. Mm -hmm. uh, what works during the pandemic, right? We're talking about keeping the costs down and replacing dollars with hard work and roll up your sleeve and sweat equity. But we also have to recognize the pandemic has sincerely had an effect. If you were uh, going to trade shows, if you were hoping that, you know, you would have, if you have a small restaurant, a small coffee shop, that people would be able to come in on a regular basis, eight o'clock in the morning, lined up outside, that's not happening right now, right? There's so many things that are in-person struggles have been created, but that doesn't mean you can't stay connected. And so um, Thomas used a great word when he said authentic, and I had said sincere, sincere concern, genuine concern. Being involved with people, think about how many are isolated right now, sitting remotely in their homes, pretty much limited in terms of who they're connecting with and how grateful you are when the phone rings. There was a time when the phone rang and you let it go to voicemail or you just wanted to be email or text savvy because you didn't want to have that conversation. And now I think people are beginning to say, somebody call me, please be concerned about me. And so you can distinguish yourself and your organization by staying connected, being proactive, demonstrating you're committed to someone else's well-being. You can also start showing and doing in, um, your expertise in certain areas. So if that's banking, if that's the university, if that's videography, if that's accounting services, what are you doing really well to help the community during the pandemic? And how, why and should they turn to you for advice? Become that platform of expertise. Become the influencer in the community. Someone says, you know, I think that if we had, we're a nonprofit, if we did a series of video thank yous, that would really be helpful to our big donors. And I say, yes, and I know just the person who can help you with those video, those quick, brief thank yous uh, videos, videos instead of um, handwritten notes. So become that person, become that organization that during a pandemic and after people turn to because you're connected, you're relevant, and above all else, as Thomas said, you're, you're really genuine in your concern. You're interested in people. You're not just saying, well, there's no other way to get in front of you, so I guess I'll just have to call you instead. Your heart well, has to be. Let me add. Let me add to that because because I one of the things I've learned is, you know, there is a family business culture, and so now that I'm doing this, I walk into a family business and I say, "Are you a family business?" And it's amazing how they 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 smile, they light up. I often get free pizza when I go into uh, to that, and so everybody remember that if you want free pizza. <laughs> But I think we need to really understand that, especially as family businesses, those that work, that just by doing that, that becomes very personal and it makes a, a real connection. And we really need to be, it's, you know, this is a tough time for, for all businesses, but especially family businesses. So we need, to, we need to support each other. So I think that's a great way, a secret to be very personal. Absolutely. And one thing I also want to add, one of the things I'm noticing, because it's about personal, you know, um, when you have your name on the front door, it's your name and it means so much beyond just working at a large organization that has a well-known corporate name. Um, what I think is so interesting is we've not always been personal. We're more professional, professionally connected. And with Zoom, how many Zoom calls have you been on where the cat walks behind or the kids are jumping on the bed or somewhere at long uh, today before we disengage? I think my dog will bark because he'll be coming in from a walk. So you're getting a view and a glimpse of people in their homes, in their personal lives in a place you've never been before. And you might say, 
I love your artwork or I, I, I see the eagle in the picture. Where did you get that? Or someone had some street art on their, house, on their wall the other day. I said, that's a really interesting um, ob uh, piece of art object. So I got that street art uh, down in New York City 10 years ago, walking along uh, 7th Avenue, someone was selling it. So you get these great stories about people and that adds to your brand, that adds and completes the picture of who you are. So take advantage of this opportunity to be inside someone's home in a way we would have never done before. Right, right. Thomas, you were shaking your head. Were you going to say something? Yeah. Uh, so actually, it's funny that you mentioned that, um, you know, with Zoom and everything being uh, so prevalent right now. Uh, I think it's really interesting because we saw like a string of commercials coming out uh, right when the pandemic started with a lot of just like home recorded, whether it's Zoom or iPhone recorded commercials. And it's like, you know, it's, it's really interesting to see because, you know, what I do is video production, obviously. So, um, so it's really interesting to see how authenticity trumps um, production quality or anything like that. Um, and it was just like this amazing opportunity to like get out there, you know, show people who you are. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people were receptive to those types of media because it was very authentic. Like you said, you know, you're seeing the family in the background, you know, you're, you're working, you're staring at a screen every day with your family, you're stuck inside. Um, and it was just a, such a unique uh, moment in time. It makes everybody real. You know, you always picture, I, I'm going to use Dale as an example, but he's you know, got quite a lofty title there. And I have him up sort of on a pedestal and I think, you know, I could never do that or I could never be that. And then, you, you know, you see him in his house and his kid saying, daddy, daddy, or his dog is barking saying, come on, let's go. And you're like, wait, he's just exactly facing all the same issues I'm facing, right? And so everyone comes to that same level and uh, being real is an important thing when you're trying to build your brand and attract people to you and, they, and have them feel loyal to you. Right? and have them like you. Likeability is the most important characteristic in marketing. Who wants to work with someone they don't like, right? So yeah, we can go to the next one. I'm just going to run through real quickly because um, I know um, I want to really hear Thomas's video information, but we have a couple of things that I had said were part of that integrated plan. And I, these are the key pieces. What We'll go through a few of them, but certainly your website acts in many ways as your quarterback, tells your story. People come there. They find your social media links. They see your blogs. They see what you're about, often pictures lead you to think to perhaps Facebook. Um, we've got right on there, use video to tell your story, but it helps establish credibility. When you look and I say, oh, I really want to know more about what Thomas does, and I pull up his website and um, it's very sparse or it's not easy to navigate or there's not a lot of examples of the videos he's done, um, I'm going to wonder, like, how good is this guy when I can even, you know, really relate to his website? So it, it's your calling card. And it is the starting place for that brand when you can't be there in person. And we're looking for kind of COVID safe tools. And the website is one where you definitely have high touch without touching anybody. We'll have a few more of these, right? And um, that's the point. It's up to you to be able to keep the content fresh. It's up to you to be able to add value and be memorable and relevant. It's up to you to offer resources. What better time than doing during COVID to say, here are links to help you find the information you need. Here's how you can use video during COVID. I mean, a specific target on a specific challenge can only help at this time. And it goes, starts with the website and the education you offer there. I think next we have um, social media. Again, high touch with no touch. Um, how can you reach out during, linked, during uh, COVID using your resources, not having to be there, not having to go for that cup of coffee, which is fun. I love to sit across the table from my good friends and connect with them. Uh, but if I can't, there are other tools that we use that help us stay really connected in that genuine way, sharing, and not only sharing your own things, but others. So if, if you send me an invitation to the next, uh, or the, the uh, announcement of the next family business nominations being open, for example, I'm going to put that on LinkedIn and say, hey, friends, don't forget that uh, FBU's family business program is about to start. Be sure to nominate somebody and here's the link right to the nomination form. So use that to stay connected in the community. Everybody's sitting, most everybody, isolated in some fashion or another, more or less in every, every way. And the more you can stay connected, the more appreciative everyone is for that. And then they in return are connected to you. So again, you know, COVID free, hands free. The next one is consistent contact, I think. Trouble advancing. There you go. 
Okay, so this just reiterates and, re and reminds everybody that consistent is a key word, consistent and meaningful. I don't use my words frivolously when you're in marketing, every word matters and everything you say is important. And to yourself anyway, maybe not to everyone else, but uh, hopefully to everyone else. And saying consistent um, is the first thing with a plan, right? The plan helps you stay consistent, but adding relevant and meaningful communication. So whether that is by email, phone call, because there's so few of those today, and then, of course, virtual meetings and being able to sometimes say, OK, I'll give you a call. Maybe someone is tired of having to comb their hair and put a shirt on, a, a more formal shirt on. Um, so maybe you just do a, a phone call. But sometimes it's nice to be able to see the person's face as well. It can be 15 minutes, but that's just the opportunity to touch. And then never forget when you're talking about doing things on a shoestring and doing budget, shoestring budget and doing things as a family business, that you have a story to tell. And the newspapers and the other media, um, formal media presence in the community are looking for those local stories. So I'm not promising you Wall Street Journal's interested, and I'm certainly not promising the New York Times is, although they may very well be. But when you have a story to tell about what you're doing or things you're seeing or solutions you've come up with uh, to an issue, when you are the expert, when you have staked that space for yourself and said, if you need to know about this issue, families in business, cinematography, video, marketing, accounting, whatever it is, retail, manufacturing, uh, the, the ability to make that key widget that everybody needs in order to um, get their product onto the marketplace, whatever it is you're doing, you're really good at it. And as a family business, you're really proud of that. And so when you can demonstrate that you have a solution and you can share that story with the press, they're thrilled because they have to fill the space as well. They have, in order to keep their readers coming back, they have to have important and meaningful information to share. If you don't tell them what's going on, it's harder for them to have access to that great consistent information. Share statistics if you're seeing them. But if you're having a webinar, invite someone from the press to join and hear what's going on. So they see firsthand and learn from you and say, I'm going back there. They've got it all together. They know what they're doing. Next time I have a question on this topic, I know where to go. When you're in a hurry, you're the press with a deadline, whether you're online or you're in print. Today, everybody's online. Um, and you have a time frame to fit, and you don't know who you're calling or the value of what, or that they'll reply quickly, or the value of what they're sharing with you. It helps a lot to know that person's brand and the company's brand and go right for them first time ever, first time out, so you don't waste a lot of effort. So be, be available for those interviews send the information out and keep the media informed. Content is critical. Being, uh, having that depth of expertise and being able to share it means everything. And then the networking, of course. Networking, like staying connected. We've all been great networkers. There isn't anyone on this call that isn't a passionate networker that hasn't built their business by creating valuable relationships. All I'm telling you is that as you're looking through the lens of small business, uh, limited resources, and then layer on top of that the complexities of COVID when every morning I used to get up and meet someone for breakfast, attend a meeting, attend a board meeting, go somewhere for lunch, have a program at night, and now I'm sitting on my couch waiting for my dog to come in and out, right? So clearly, it's a frustration, but you can still do that. Who are the other influencers? Again, pick up that phone, trust someone's opinion, talk to someone that they ask, and here's what I'm going to say. Ask someone who else do you need to know. That's something I don't do enough of. I rarely ask my clients who else do I need to know or can you give me a referral, please, which we should be doing. But I also don't often come back and say, yeah, who do you, who's been coming around to some of those family business meetings that you think I could help out with some potentially a 20-minute conversation about building their brand? That's how I met Laura, right? So asking for, that's the way the network is going to be built in COVID. I'm not going to go and sit, unfortunately, um, in Florham Park at, around the table and get to meet anybody. But I can get on a Zoom call and I can ask for help. And so take about those individual friendships you already have and build on them during COVID because this is the time to leverage that. We don't really have a lot of other resources and tools to do that. So use your friends and ask them and return the favor by introducing them as well. Yep. Perfect. Again, we're trying to keep the cost down. The time of effort goes up but also recognizing the challenges of not being able to walk out that door in the cavalier fashion that we have all done for all of our lives. So even on a shoestring budget, 
structured. Remember I said I use my words carefully. Structured, discipline would be a good word, strategic, mm -hmm. consistent process. If you have those words and you keep that idea in mind, you can build that brand, any size organization at all, focusing on the audience you serve, the value you can bring to them, the expertise that you have that no one else has in that key area. And then you help, that helps you uh, build those me meaningful relationships and attract and retain those super duper fantastic clients and staff. The staff wants to work with a company that thinks ahead, that is disciplined, and that is always committed to uh, building great relationships, no matter what pandemic we have. The, friendships uh, are friendships. And, and here's Sally. So I know video fits in in a million different places here, and is many in many instances the perfect solution for the challenges we've brought up. So I've kind of laid the groundwork for you, and um, when you get that commission check, Thomas, you, I'll give you my address. <laughs> and, and I forgot to mention too that both Sally and Thomas are were sponsors of our uh, our 28 Family Business of the Year Award. So we just want to thank you again publicly for your great work. And so, so Thomas, you know, Sally's covered a lot of great stuff. Um, you know, talk a little bit about your work and, and how you've been helping companies. Yeah, so um, I actually prepared uh, two videos so I can I can share the um, I have like a sizzle and then a longer form video that I can show at the end. Does that work with you? Yeah, guys? yeah, I'll pay. you should be able to share. Yep. yep okay, can, cool. Yep, I'm gonna I'll load that up right now. And this is just a sizzle reel. So give everyone a little bit of background on some of the work that that myself and my company have done. Um, so I'm just gonna share this. And here we go. Might be a little loud. Uh oh, it's quiet and we don't hear anything. But Thomas, we don't hear anything. Oh, you guys have um, no audio? No audio, there's no audio, yeah. <laughs> One second. All right, here we go. So you got the, at the end of the video there with audio. Um, but just a quick little overview of some of the work that we've done. Um, and I think, um, you know, just to speak on, on some of the things that Sally mentioned, because I think she said, you know, she offered a lot of really good um, insight from a marketing standpoint. Um, what I've always been drawn to with video, um, to, give, to give everyone a little bit of background, um, with video creation, uh, I found that because um, I've worked with a lot of, you know, small family owned businesses. And um, I know, you know, Sally and Dale have mentioned how, um, you know, there's always a story involved with with a family owned business, there's always some sort of history. Um, and that uh, has been extremely valuable for for me and my company, um, just from the standpoint of being able to provide um, that company value in creating a video. Um, so showing that story, showing what makes them unique um, is, you know, video has been a great medium to do so. Um, and so I found that, you know, every time I'll work with a family owned business, there's always like an amazing story, an amazing, uh, you know, any sort of context of like, you know, some of these guys have been in business for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, so they have a lot to tell. Um, and, being able to use that and leverage it with video um, has been a really good opportunity for, for those types of businesses. Um, so, so it is really interesting to see how, how that shift has uh, kind of happened, especially now. Um, you know, I would say just from, from my standpoint, you know, I'm always creating content for my own business. I, I, I guess I practice what I preach, so to say. So I'm always doing, uh, always doing video work. Um, and I would say, you know, for those uh, small businesses out there that, you know, maybe haven't thought about video before, um, it would be a great opportunity to, even if you're just, you know, shooting on your iPhone, just showing people like, you know, behind the scenes of your company, something like that um, is a tremendous amount of value to, to your customers. Um, get it out there, you know, show your voice, show your personality. 
Um, I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's what makes businesses unique and what can separate you from your, from your competition. Thomas, yeah. So, um, um, I see one of the, one of the, uh, one of our, our attendees was saying how video shows the behind the scenes of the company. Have you done that to really let people really connect with the business and know it's not just a front facing business? Have you, have you done much of that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, Pretty much all of our uh, all of our video work, um, it not only tells the story of a business. Um, so, so the majority of, of the work that we do is is really just sharing that story. Um, but on top of that, is also showing like what um, you know what it's like to be a, a potential customer of that business. So you know they'll get an, a good idea of what it's like to work with you. Um, not only that, but it'll also show like you know what what they're actually doing behind the scenes to to make everything work. Um, and that in itself, you know, just really shows the personality. It's like, uh, because a lot of times people don't see that, you know, when you walk into a business, you don't see, you know, the, the blood, sweat and tears that goes into, you know, building your business or creating the product or service that they're getting. Um, so showing that is, you know, like I said, I think it's a tremendous value to your customers because, you know, it could, uh, educate them on, you know, everything that you do to, to make what they get, um, you know, so much value of, the, of, of what they get um, just works really well for them. So I don't know. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a very unique opportunity to to kind of show that. And uh, from what I've done in the past, it's been it's been really interesting because it's a lot of stuff that I you know even myself haven't hasn't seen before in the past. Well, well, but also I mean we're in such a visual age. I mean, unfortunately, I get frustrated because people don't read the way they used to read. And so, uh, you know, I love writing and articles and so on, but I recognize that video, I mean, I, as I look and, and so the Volani bus company, Courtney, we were talking about earlier, 101 years, it's been around 101 years. I just think every company should have their sizzle story, a, a, you know, a real story of, of, of family business because that makes it more personal. So why am I gonna go to Amazon when I can support a family business in my neighborhood? I really think that that, that could make a, make, a, make a difference and so, um, and, you know, the, the, Alice was saying the seeing the human behind creates, you know, great trust and, you know, and reliability. So what other kinds of things are you working with businesses on these days? I know you were talking business cards. Yeah. So, so we have what's called is a video business card. Um, and that is really, you know, like I, I, I kind of touched upon that earlier is just a really quick overview. Uh, usually it's under two minutes. So, uh, you know, people aren't going to get bored watching your story because, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you're getting customers to your website or in your sales process, you know, they're going to watch, you know, a one to two minute video, no problem. They want to learn, you know, what you're all about, uh, what you do. Um, and so really the idea with these videos is to um, show them, show them your value, show them what it's like to work with you. Uh, tell people, you know, what makes you unique. Um, you know, like I said, I've worked with a lot of small and family owned businesses and um, it's just always interesting to hear their stories because, you know, I'm hearing, you know, everything that they're talking about. And it's like, um, you know, these people have been doing their trades for years and years. Um, there's always, you know, a really good opportunity to, to share that with people. Um, and so that's the, that's the main focus of the video business cards. Um, you, that's just one of the, one of the, I guess, categories of videos that we do on top of that, you know, we do like commercial work, um, testimonial videos are really big for small businesses, interviews, um, you know, product shots as well as you saw are pretty big as well. Um, but the cool thing about, you know, if you have a service, it's intangible. So, you know, you can't just show off a beauty shot of a product. You're really just telling your story and, and you know, what makes you unique. So, um, that's a really good way to kind of make the intangible tangible, if that makes sense. Yeah. So Miriam, Miriam had asked, so, you know, where are your videos posted? So obviously you mentioned commercials. Now, what about Instagram, Facebook websites? And she doesn't have it up here, but TikTok. Have you done any TikTok videos? For <laughs> so, so I haven't done any uh, personally for, for my company uh, or I haven't really gotten any requests from, from clients yet for that. Um, but, you know, I think it, you know, any platform is a really good opportunity to kind of get your, get your message out there, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, I always, you know, the way that I think is like the more sources that you have to reach people, the better. Um, so the cool thing about video is, you know, say you do have like a quick video up on your website, you can quickly format that to work really well on Instagram, 
Facebook or TikTok or wherever, and you're just repurposing that video. So, you know, you only, you only put the work in to make that video once, and then you just kind of repurpose it to use it there. Um, you know, you could use it for email marketing, really anything. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of op opportunity to reuse that stuff and, uh, you know, constantly make it work for you. Um, which, you know, I think is another, you know, amazing benefit of a video. So, so let me ask, you know, one of the things that I think is really powerful that we don't take for, you know, we take for granted is really music in the video. Really, I mean, the right kind of music can make people feel something. I mean, you know, you go to a movie and you hear certain music, you, you know what's going to be scary or it's going to be funny or it's going to be romantic. And so, you know, how do you use video, how do you use music in a video? Yeah, so that's a that's a great point uh, that you mentioned there. Uh, if you guys uh, noticed in the, uh, I know that the uh, audio was kind of cut out there um, at the end, but the whole idea behind that sizzle reel, um, I think the the music plays a big part in that. It was very upbeat, kind of gives you, uh, you know, it's like okay, you know, maybe you were falling asleep on your computer, but then that music might have woken you up, given you some energy. Um, music is extremely powerful with video. Um, as you, as you mentioned with movies, you know, if you're, if you're watching a sad movie and, you know, there's, there's sad, you know, music in the background, it's only going to amplify that. Um, and music is one of those things that kind of works, um, works with your emotions. So, you know, if you're, if you're doing a motivational video, you're going to want the music to support that. If you're doing, you know, a scary, scary movie scene, you're going to want the, the music to support that. Um, and a lot of the times, you know, you can use those in your favor to to really change uh, how someone thinks about your business. So uh, another interesting use is like I know a lot of businesses have like one of those services where it's like the unnecessary evil. So like insurance, for for example, you know, not everyone loves paying for insurance, but you have to do it either way. So when you think of that, it's like progressive Geico and they're using, you know, flow, the guy, you know, the Geico gecko um, to make those uh, things so boring, such as insurance into something super interesting um, and I guess exciting to learn about. Um, so that just kind of, I guess, goes to show how, um, how interesting uh, not only the music plays a part, but also just um, you know, the emotional part of, of a video can really change how someone thinks about your company and your brand and your service. So b before we, we, I'm going to welcome Wendy Tate from Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey. And before I ask her a question, um, because they, they represent a lot of wonderful businesses who I'm sure have some questions about branding. So we have Brad Reuter is talking about um, possibly reaching out to you about, uh, because they do so many different things in the design, construction, maintenance industry. That's what makes them popular. But how do you focus on the approaches and getting professional assistance? And so um, I don't know if Sally, either you or Tom wants to, Thomas wants to answer that. that I'm going to let Thomas answer that because I think it's a video question. But I just wanted to say one thing real quickly. And that is the old adage, a picture tells a thousand words or speaks a thousand words is just like video on steroids is that picture. And it's, we've talked so much around the idea of being real and being genuine and being on Zoom and seeing someone's artwork or their children or their pets. All of this is encapsulated in that video. It gives you the one unique opportunity that no other medium gives you to be able to connect in a very real way with people to show your passion, your energy. The music certainly helps, but it's so visceral, um, like a picture, but that comes alive. And I, I feel like it can't be emphasized enough how important that is. I, I'm a writer, right? That's my job as a marketing director and I can write words, but in two seconds, you can tell a story with that smile. You said you go to the family business and they give you that piece of pizza and you say it's a family and they smile. Or Dennis talks about his daughter uh, when, he's, when he's talking about his business and his youngest next generation, right? Sitting on the uh, heavy equipment. You feel, you feel that connection. And during COVID and especially on a small budget, if you can get that message across, it's golden, right? So everything Thomas is talking about is the um, key to the heart of what you're trying to do in your branding. So okay. well, to... well, let, me, let me ask, because I've often wondered, and you know, we see these commercials and Geico really started it, these crazy commercials, <laughs> you know, which have nothing to do with really anything, but they remember, and then all of a sudden Progressive is doing it and all these. So is that, could that be useful to, uh, to a small business to, to be known to do something funny, either Sally or, or Thomas? Uh, 
you're on mute. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get the microphone up. Um, I think it depends on your audience and your own personality. For Southwest Airlines, for example, being Funny Works, right? That's their brand. It's what they're known for. And they're hilarious at times, right? I don't know if anyone's traveled Southwest. They go to Chicago and I have family there. And they are just great. When you get on a United flight, they're not funny. It's nothing wrong with United. And it's the hub of Chicago. And they do a great job. And you get there safely and on time. And I'm not here with a proponent for either airline. But they wouldn't be funny because that's not their brand. So if your brand is to say, we're kind of outrageous, we're a little silly, and we're going to show you golden retrievers because you're going to fall in love with the golden retrievers, there's nothing to do with the fact that you need um, a bus to take you to school, and Villani bus does that, unless the bus driver is a golden retriever. Courtney, if you could pull that off, let me know. But if you're not funny, and then you try to be funny, then it's not real and genuine anymore. Right. So I would say for whoever it works, it works, but you need to do that plan so you know your audience, you know what they want to hear from you, you know what they value. If you don't want to have a whole lot of jokes and you just want to know what are you going to charge me, then maybe that doesn't work. But if you say, you know what, I could use a little lightheartedness. I've been sitting in my living room since March 16th and it's going to be a year. Oh, my God. Very shortly. Then maybe a laugh hurt. You know, it doesn't hurt. So you have to be able to read the tea leaves, I think, before you can make a flat decision. Right. You know, Thomas, you want to say? Yeah, I would say I this goes uh, pretty hand in hand with um, what Sally was talking about with branding earlier. Um, you know, with the, the Geico, the Gecko ads, the progressive flow ads that, you know, I think is established in branding and then using video to kind of play off of that has allowed them to, you know, like I said, you know, insurance is just so boring and you know, no one really enjoys paying for it. But when you have like something like a gecko or flow uh, to, to kind of put a face to that, to that brand and that company, um, I think is a, is a really cool opportunity to, you know, like, like we mentioned earlier, just kind of take, um, I guess, put an image to your company. Um, and even that, that coffee example that we mentioned earlier, it's, it's coffee culture. It's not just a coffee shop. Um, that's, that's a really good example of like a small, or I guess like a smaller, uh, way of how, how you can really take your branding to the next level. Um, and that way you get, your company is now known for something more than just a coffee shop. You know, you're going there for, to look at art, you're going there to meet your friends, uh, listen to good music, you know, whatever it is. Um, so I, I think it really goes hand in hand with branding. Um, and once you have that really, uh, solid branding foundation, you can, you can really do some unique uh, things with uh, with video, you know, photo, web web design, you know, whatever it is, even culture, like like in the coffee shop example. Excellent. The, uh, well, let me give Wendy. I don't know if Wendy has any questions uh, on behalf of Commerce and Industry and Association of New Jersey. Tony Russo often has some questions around branding. Wendy, do you have anything? If not, I have I have some more questions. I don't know if she's uh, she's there. Um, uh, one of the things, colors are so important. And uh, I often think of branding to, you know, not only just the visual, not only just the words, but colors and sounds. Do you both do things with colors or Thomas, let me go to you first. I mean, you know, should you have a color for your brand? And every time you see that color <laughs> that represents that, does that, what do you think? Yeah, I think, um, I think uh, Sally could definitely talk a lot into this, but I think, you know, from, from a video standpoint, um, that also kind of goes hand in hand with marketing and, and branding um, because colors have a psychological effect on, on the way you think, you know, a great example of that is the McDonald's colors, you know, kind of triggers you to, to be hungry or think about food. Um, and that's, that's the same case for video. You know, if you're looking at, um, you know, a really, uh, I guess a good example is a nighttime scene is usually always blue. So, so you're always uh, thinking of that. Uh, blue is a relaxing color. Um, and all of this stuff is used, I think, a lot in, in branding, especially in like logo design, um, because, you know, you want that um, subconscious uh, perspective to kind of go through to your to your customers. Um, and most of the time, people don't think about it, but it definitely plays a big role in, in video, um, as, just as much as marketing and, and branding. Can you imagine seeing a UPS truck go by and it would be yellow instead of brown? <laughs> You'd be like, what the heck happened to that truck, right? right? So I mentioned that your brand is not just your logo, but a logo is an integral part of the brand, right? Mm -hmm. Your reputation, all the visceral things that go around your brand matter, but your logo represents you in places where you can't be all the time, like a McDonald's arches, like a, like a, like a black swan, like anything, right? Like the FDU book. So 
whatever it is that is yours. And Thomas is right that certain colors do have certain emotional, yellow might be sunny or blue might be calming, but whatever color you pick, what all I would suggest is consistency, right? Yeah. If you want someone to remember that that's you and it changes every time, if you go to any of the larger companies, they'll have a branding book that's like that thick. Where can the logo be? Which corner can it be in? What kind of font? How big? If it's placed next to another logo, where does it need to be located? Does it have to be bigger than the other organization logo? And I'm sure you're never going to see E&Y in purple or you know, any, any, any other color for uh, McDonald's, uh, obviously, because it just it is who they've become. And they've worked really hard to build that consistency and disciplined approach so that when you see it, you have that immediate reaction. The kids are screaming, I want McDonald's, I want French fries, whatever. And it just is what it is. So if you avoid that, you've lessened your value of your logo significantly by not being consistent. So, so we just have a few minutes, but, but the one thing that I know is a, is a problem with most is, is really the website. You know, they may not be social media, they, but they, they have a website and they have a, a poorly done picture of their restaurant or their store. And, uh, you know, what, what advice do you both have as we we're closing out for people to kind of jazz up their website and, and make it more effective? So, um, um, Thomas, I'll start with you. Yeah. Um, so I guess from from my perspective has always been, you know, I, I kind of grew up going to, you know, if I was interested in a business or a, a product or a service, I, you know, the first step for me was always going to the website, going to social media. Um, so from my perspective, uh, like from a video standpoint, um, you know, when a company has a video and I'm interested in working with them, I'm going to watch it, you know, pretty much all the way through. Um, so, you know, just making sure that that is a really good uh, reflection of your, of your company and your business. Um, and also, you know, you, like I said, using it as a, as a way to connect with people, using it as a way to um, maybe entice them to work with you. Um, but really just showing your personality, your authenticity um, is a great way to do it. And of course, you know, that comes through with your website as well. Um, but I think, you know, for me, at least that's always been like the biggest opportunity ever is just, you know, show people who you are really quickly, really easily. Um, and, and, you know, having that up on your website and your social media, um, you know, is huge. So before I, I have to said, say, I have said, so let, let yeah, me say one thing too, because we, was some people said, you know, music can be copywritten. And so how do you get free music, you know, or, or what, what do you recommend before we go to Sally? So, yeah. So, uh, one of the biggest issues with, with music and video is when you produce a video for your company. Um, or you have that professionally done by someone like myself and my company, um, using music, uh, there is, when you create that for your company, you're uh, basically you're taking ownership. So uh, you, can't, you can't own certain songs. There's a ton of copyright issues with that. So you have to be sure to, call, uh, to use what's called royalty-free music. Um, you can purchase it. There is free royalty music selection out there. Um, I know um, YouTube has a whole library of, of uh, royalty free music. So that's a good uh, free resource. You can also, you know, just look around online and, and find some. Usually what I found is paying for some of the uh, royalty free music song selections. You get a, a much better quality song. Uh, it doesn't sound super cheesy. So uh, that's what I would recommend. And you don't have the issues of, of any copyright. You, you technically own that song and you can use it to uh, advertise your your business. Wonderful, great, great. I'm sorry, Sally. Yep. No, no. And you only have about two minutes, but I wanted to say that um, when you use pictures, videos, whatever it is you're doing, the only thing I would say is it has to be crisp and clean, and it has to be done right. We've talked a lot about working on a shoestring budget, and I don't want anyone to think that they have to spend a hundred thousand dollars to do their website over. But at the same time, it represents you, and if it's sloppy, there's an expectation that you might be sloppy as well. If I come to your site and it doesn't download or the pictures are fuzzy, what does that tell me when I'm trusting you to do my audit or I'm trusting you to deliver my groceries or I'm trusting you to have you know, fresh food for the from your restaurant coming on time to my house when I order that pizza? So it really does speak on your behalf and it's subtle, but if it's not right, it gives a message that neither are you. And you are held accountable to whatever it is you're putting out there. So I would say never ever take a shortcut and never be sloppy. I, that's different than doing your own work. Like Thomas said uh, early on, the, it was fun to see homemade videos. It's fun to see what someone is interviewing people with their own phone. I'm not saying it can't, that it has to be highly polished, 
depending on the medium and what the point is. But I am saying that you cannot be sloppy and it can't be done poorly and fuzzy. And, you know, my cousin took these pictures for us at a party and we threw them up on our website. It right. just doesn't work if you're trying to make an impression. The way it wouldn't if you were in person. You walk in nicely, looking nicely, nicely groomed. You shake someone's hand, you look them in the eye and they feel good about that. This is the look them in the eye, shake their hand opportunity virtually. Well, well I, I want to thank you. Uh, uh, this is great information. Um, uh, hey, hey, Wendy, how are you? Good, good to see you. Um, and, um, um, you know, I see Herb Glenn out there and a few of our other friends, MJ Salvato. So thanks for coming. Wendy, did you want to say anything? One, any final, uh, um, these are, these, they, they were great, great insight. So it was tremendous insight. And Sally is really, truly a resident expert and has helped CINJ so much as an organization really continue to move ourselves and our members forward. So wonderful job to Thomas and to Sally and Dale. Thanks so much for the program. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and we will see you next week. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye -bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thomas.